Let's use GitHub and clone our remote repository. I'm back on GitHub, looking at the Recipes repository page. Click on the Code button and select Open with GitHub Desktop. You may be asked for permission or be required to log in. Then click Open GitHub Desktop.exe. GitHub Desktop opens with a clone a repository box. It's smart and defaults the repository URL to the recipes GitHub repo we just created. If this step doesn't work for you, open GitHub Desktop directly. Then select File, Clone Repository from the menu to display the Clone a Repository box, and pick the Recipes repository from the list. We then choose a location for our local path. This defines our working folder. Mine defaults to my Documents slash GitHub folder, but select any folder you wish. Click the Clone button, and GitHub Desktop does several things. It creates the working folder using the path we specified. On my system, the local repository for the recipes project is here in the Documents slash GitHub folder. It creates a local Git repo called .get. If you don't see this file, on Windows, click the View menu and check Hidden Items. On a Mac, press Command, Shift, period. This is our local repository, where all our local commits are stored. If you're interested in understanding the layout and content of this folder, check out the lesson links at the end of this lesson. But we really don't need to know the details of how Git stores our commits. The clone process copies the commit history from the remote to our local repository. Lastly, by default, it copies all of the files from the latest commit to the working folder. Here are the two files that GitHub committed when we asked it to add the license and readme files. Even though we aren't accessing Git directly through its commands, our files are stored and versioned with Git. I'll minimize the folder so we can focus on GitHub Desktop. In the toolbar at the top, we select which local repository we want to work with. Currently, we only have one that we've added to GitHub Desktop. We can also select a branch. At this point, we only have one branch in our recipe repo. But from here, we can create more branches as needed. On the left are two tabs. The Changes tab lists any files in the working folder that we've created or changed and not yet committed. So far, we haven't changed any. The History tab lists the commit history. This is the initial commit that GitHub made for us, including the license and README file. This view is similar to the commit history we saw in GitHub. Before we move on, let's go back to the slides. So, we can use GitHub Desktop to clone a remote repository. This creates the working folder, initializes the local Git repository, copies the commit history from the remote to the local repo, and copies the files from the latest commit to the working folder. We can then compare file versions, commit changes, and push our commit history back to GitHub. Ready to change some files and try out some commits? Let's do that next!